Why do I look like that? Like some weird shadow under my eyes. It's not there until I back up and then it looks like I got dark circles, but I don't. Y'all see me in the light. I don't really have dark circles, but it's gonna look like that when I back up. Hey, what's up, rock stars? It's Rocks with a little bit of talk about what's at the top of the blog. So let's get to it. I say I'm gonna take some time off, y'all. All the cashiers, they was like, somebody stole her truck. It was like, you could hear it all throughout the store. This Rock's coming to you today with a review for Love and Marriage Detroit, Love and Marriage Huntsville, our book for Real Housewives of Atlanta. Let's get to it, shall we? All right, you guys, I ain't gonna hold you too long. You know, shout out to Krishan Rock because I feel like I've been, I feel like I done did a video every fucking day. It feel like the old days. Y'all probably sick of seeing me. So we just gonna, we gonna do two 20 minute videos and we gonna wrap this shit up, y'all. First story up, y'all already know what it's gonna be about. It's gonna be about y'all uncle, y'all favorite country bumpkin, Shannon Sharp Child. Listen, I don't know what I did in my life to deserve those couple of minutes, it's a couple of minutes that we can't never get back. And I'm mad about it, child. I was like, I didn't never need to have my life lived and and, 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 and experience something like that. It, it was just the most traumatizing thing. It was almost like listening to something, like listening to a parent. Oh my God. I was just like, uh-uh. So let, let me just back up just in case you did not know what happened. So yesterday I was at work minding my own business and uh, on the family chat, you know, the text message between me, Mr. Joe, and Jada, um, Joe just sends a message that says, Shannon Sharp with a shake in my head emoji. And then Mr. Re responded to it and put LMAO. And I was like, whoa, what happened? And so then he said, uh, Shannon Sharp accidentally went live on IG while he was having sex. I said, what? <laughs> Now, you know, as the reporter that comes and gives you guys a story, I had to go see exactly what it was that Mr. Shannon Sharp had done. And, but immediately after I had clicked on the video, you guys, I was just like, now, why did I do this? Why did I do this? But I will admit, inquiring minds wanted to know, like, to what extent was we talking about? Oh, we was talking about, we could not see what was going on. However, if you have any sort of imagination, you could pretty much figure out what, what was going on at the time. It was him and the young lady. We gonna call her Michelle, cause that's what he was calling her. Baby, he was in there and I said, oh God, the visual in my mind, the visual in my mind, I could just picture him, you know, big, sweating, shiny, all on top of the girl. He's a talker just in case you did not see the video. I mean, he was just like, oh, oh, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's my Michelle. That's my Michelle. Oh, oh, yeah. I was like, <laughs> oh, I can't take it. I can't take it. That damn Shannon Sharp, you know, you would look at him and you would think that he was kind of one of them ram jam kind of types. You know, the types that take steroids and shit that's always hyped up on some shit. No, no, no. Not Shannon Sharp. Okay. Shannon Sharp is more of the slow and passionate type. At least on this particular day he was. He was going and going and old girl was just a moaning and a making noises and it was suction noises. And I was just like, oh God, I'm so embarrassed for him, but I could not stop the video. Oh, oh, Michelle. Oh, that's my Michelle. Oh, yeah. Oh, baby, you won't take this day. Oh, baby, you gonna take it. I said, oh, yeah, that's definitely some sweat-induced type of love making there. <laughs> Nigga, it's probably real hot in there, smelling like breath and badussy. Oh, unk, I didn't need it. It's, but the video is funny as hell because... The people, because he's on live, of course, everybody's comments are going up and people are cracking up like, Unk, Unk, you are on live. Okay, they started tagging Ocho Cinco because somebody needed to let him know. Okay, because it was clear that he did not realize that he was going live with this type of performance. <laughs> that was pretty much it. The video went down and then 
a little while later, we saw um, a post that came up on his Instagram that said that he was he was hacked. His page was hacked. Him and his team are trying to figure out what's going on. I was just like, now, nah, Unc, I, I don't really know how you go, how you get hacked when it's a live video. Okay, this is not a video that was saved in somebody's phone. Somebody else might have got a hold of it and then decided to post it on like his stories or something. This shit is live, meaning that it is happening real time right now. Okay, so I don't even know how somebody would be able to hack you unless they are hacking in, doing the act, but acting like they're you. But when you listen to that, even with all the, oh, oh, baby, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> unless somebody else was acting like they were you, I don't really know how you could get hacked, you know, and it was definitely on his page and it did actually sound like him. It was a whisper. But it definitely was him, you know. So I was cracking up because people were tagging Ocho Cinco. I guess Ocho Cinco probably was whole minding his damn business. And then he kept on getting all these tags like, what the fuck is going on? And had to go on there and see. And then was like, oh shit, let me get my boy. <laughs> So maybe later on, we got a uh, message on Shannon Sharp's um, Instagram again, and he said that he is going to be going live at 9 p.m. Um, so that he can address, you know, the situation. All right. And sure enough, he did go live last night, and um, he took all he took all blame. He said that he got home and. He had his phone and he was with, you know, his lovely lady, Miss Michelle. And um, he threw his phone down and, you know, he got the he got the business. OK, he don't regret having intimacy. He's a human being. He's a man. He, he 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 you know, he's involved with this woman or whatever. It was consenting. So it was all good. But he does regret the fact that it went live. I was like, you think <laughs> he said that he don't know how the shit went live. But it was live and he had no idea. He said that then later as time was going on, his phone started ringing. And when he answered it, I guess it was Ocho Cinco. And he was telling him like, hey, you know, yo, your phone, where's your phone? Okay, the phone is in there. Okay, well, the people can hear you. Who? What people? The people that follow you. Well, what can they hear? Well, it sounds like you having sex. And he said that his heart dropped. And I was just like, yeah, that, that shit is very embarrassing. The fact that he has family out there, you know, I'm, I'm, is his mom still alive? I mean, like, those are the things that you just do not want certain people. Your, your great auntie, the one that always be like, come here, baby, give me a hug. How you been? You know, you don't want them to know that you out here, <laughs> you know, filth, florin, filth, florin, filth, fucking on the damn Instagram. Child, he said that he had to call his sisters. You know, he had to call all the people, you know, that I guess he has, you know, the people that pay him. And uh, he had to explain that, you know, that was not a hacking, that actually somebody from his team just put that up, I guess, while they tried to figure out what, how they was going to address the situation. But no, that's not what happened. He said that he accidentally went live. And um, yeah, I was just see, that's exactly the fuck why I don't do live videos. I don't even know how you go live. Is it more than just one step? The part of the story that is giving me a little pause is the fact that how is it that now I've done a lot of things on my phone on accident, you know, accidentally unlocked it, accidentally opened up an app or something like that. But how is it that you go through so many steps to actually go live? I mean, it's not impossible. It's not impossible, but it's just a weird, it's just a very weird and I mean, I guess it's just a weird occurrence. It just happened to be that way. But I was just like, oh, oh, no. Oh, 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 Michelle. Oh, that's my Michelle. Oh, you gonna take this thing. Oh, Michelle. You I mean, you can just picture them. All that sweat dripping in your fucking eye. You know, you trying to maneuver and everything. I mean, the shit is good, but also you hot. You know, and you really wish you that, you know, you can finish this up. Oh, it was just, it was really awful. Now, my question to you guys is, do we believe that it was an accident? I mean, I really want to think that 
he wouldn't go this far. People are saying, well, there were rumors about him being gay. I never thought that Shannon Sharp was gay. I think Shannon Sharp is just country, but I don't, I don't get gay vibes from him. Not that my gaydar is really all that great. But I, you know, he just didn't seem like he was. But I guess there have been a, a lot of people that are are questioning his sexuality. So some people are saying that he did that on purpose to let people know that he really is having sex with a woman. You know, him saying the lady's name and all of that. And I was just like, I mean, that could very well be true. But also, he could just be a talker and just be one of those. Oh my, oh, oh that's my Michelle. <laughs> that's his Michelle. I'm trying to figure out if the Instagram snoops. You guys ain't figured out who this Michelle girl is yet. Child, because y'all know y'all be on it and ain't nobody came up with it. I felt so bad for Miss Michelle, though. If this really truly was an accident, you know, the fact that she didn't got blasted and people is going to make it their business to figure out who it is. Yeah, that's terrible. And then my next question was, while you was up here getting busy with um, old Michelle, what exactly was Michelle doing? Because, listen, we can hear that Michelle was enjoying herself. But before y'all got started, who had that phone? Who had access to the phone? Who was able to maybe hit a couple of buttons and go live? Was Michelle happened to be one of them ones that <laughs> wanted everybody to know what she was doing? Yeah, I would hope not. But you know, you can't you can't put nothing past nobody these days. How do you just go live? I need you guys to explain to me what is the process of going live on Instagram. But I done told y'all that live shit is the devil. That live shit is the devil. They shouldn't even have it. <laughs> you shouldn't even be able to easily get to it. But I think that that's the point. Maybe it's not easily. Do you guys believe that this was an accident? Or do you believe that he put that shit out there? You know, Shannon has had quite the viral moments this uh, year. So um, <laughs> he, he don't really need the extra publicity and everything. But again, like I said, those rumors that are going around about him, maybe it's just like, I, I don't know. But I know in my soul that that shit scarred me on a very deep level. <laughs> that's exactly the feeling that I got not even necessarily my parents because I you know in your mind you figure your parents have sex this is like one of them ones that you don't be thinking have sex like your grandparents like oh god I don't mm, child I tell you what but it was funny you know his explanation you know I, you know uh, I try to be a uh, very professional uh, when I get on, you know, even when I'm at home, you know, I try to be very professional. Why are you trying to be professional at home, Shannon? You can relax at home, okay? <laughs> I feel like he didn't know what the fuck to say. Oh, you know, and then, well, well, then, well, I came in my room and I threw the phone on the bed. <laughs> That was way too much for my senses, baby. I was overstimulated. I was just like, I can't take no more of this. No more of this, child. Very, very embarrassing. Uh, but hopefully, you know, he will not have any more instances like that. Or, you know, maybe some people out there might have enjoyed listening to that. You know, some people do get turned on just from the sound, you know. But I just, it the visual in the mind. I was just like, whoa wee <laughs> Sound like they had a good time, though, didn't they? All right, y'all, I'm going to let that shit go. <laughs> oh, there you go, baby. There you go, baby. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Woo, shit. All right, you guys, let's get that shit out the way so we can get to some more serious subjects. <clears throat> I'm serious. Puffy is in the news again, y'all. He's on the blogs again because for two reasons. First, let's talk about the fact that he lost a default judgment um, on a case that was brought upon him um, and he did not respond. So the lawsuit was brought by plaintiff Derek Lee Cardello Smith. Okay, this man has accused Diddy of sexually assaulting him back in 1997. And he says that he worked in like the restaurant and hospitality industry back in Detroit. And there was a party, apparently, and he said that Puffy sexually assaulted him at this party. He said he was drugged and sexually assaulted. Now, he's currently in jail, and he's been in jail for a lot of, like, sexual um, uh, harassment. He's been, in, he's been in jail for, like, sexually, sexual, sexual abuse-type charges. 
but he says that it's proof that he that Puffy knows him because apparently Puffy's name shows up on the visitation log. All right. Um, I don't know when the article that I was reading did not give me the timeline. So I don't really know when all this shit happened. But supposedly he's saying that Puffy came there and talked to him and offered him a two point three million dollar settlement on this. And um, he was just like, you know how we get down. And the guy was like, yeah, well, I don't like how you get down. And so he refused the $2.3 million. And then he decided to sue um, Puffy for $100 million. Now, they also say that this Cardello Smith guy has, um, he's one of those ones that once he's been in jail, he's learned a lot about criminal law. And so he... Um, has a lot of lawsuits out there. Not only this one for Puffy, but he also has a lawsuit for the um, a Roman Catholic priest that apparently the church that he used to go to or the school that he used to go to when he was young, back in 1979, when he was like seven years old, he's saying that that guy um, also sexually um, molested him back then. And there was another employee at the church as well. So he has a lawsuit going against this priest and this employee and also Puffy at the same time. Now, Puffy maintains that he has never met this man. He don't know him from Adam. And so I guess Puffy's whole response was not to respond. Okay. Puffy got a whole bunch of lawsuits going on right now. Another one that we're going to talk about in a second. So I guess Puffy been busy and, you know, it's been hard for him to categorize and organize, you know, his time between all these fucking lawsuits. I mean, that his lawyer has got to be one of the busiest people out there right now. So Puffy, because he said that he didn't know him, he paid the whole shit dust. But, you know, you cannot do that. Ask the game. The game is now years and years and years later from when that girl sued him saying that she was sexually harassed on the game show and the game ended up ignoring that case as well and he has a judgment he has to pay what seven million dollars for this girl that he hasn't paid it but now you know the chickens are coming home to roost because now they're going after his property and all this you know so puffy probably could have learned a lesson from that but he did not obviously didn't take it seriously wasn't worried about it or whatever and or it could have just been a simple slip of the memory <laughs> you know like i said he got a lot shit going on right now and um did not go to court and so the judge was just like okay since you ain't want to come to court you know what sir mr cardello smith you win $100 million is yours, okay? Puffy is supposed to be paying $10 million a month starting in October. Now, let me back up. Before the judge gave this default judgment and after Puffy supposedly visited this guy in jail and offered the $2.3 million uh, settlement, um, there was a judge, let's see, what's her name? By the name of, uh, she's a, uh, Lena, Lenawi, Lenawi, <laughs> Lenawi County Circuit Court Judge, Anne Marie Anzalone, she ordered a restraining order on Puffy so that he could not sell any of his assets so that he could not, you know, say that he didn't have the money. So he wasn't able to sell his home or any other assets that he has. And it was blocked up, locked up in this lawsuit. So at least he kind of knew something about this lawsuit. I guess he just decided not to respond to it. Um, his lawyers are saying that, you know, there's a lot of opportunists out there. The shit that happened with Cassie and the fact that he settled so quickly with Cassie that brought all these other fictitious, um, um, people that are just trying to get money out of them, you know, out of the woodwork and all. And, um, an opportunist trying to come up. Well, I was just like, well, shit. I mean, talk about a fucking come up a hundred million damn dollars. I don't even know real rock star lawyers. I'm gonna need y'all to chime in on this one because... How do you get rid of this judgment? Is that shit just set in stone and this is what it is? Or is this something that he can then now respond to with his lawyer and try to get that handled? Okay, I, because we can't just have a $100 million bill just floating out there like that. Again, Puffy has so many problems. He probably was like, add this shit to the list. Y'all saw him in that video when he was hanging out in, in, in Harlem. Was he in Harlem or Brooklyn? Y'all don't please my New York rock stars. Y'all know I love y'all. And I'm not familiar with the boroughs out there in New York. He was in one of them places. And he was hanging out with some, you know, just some real regular looking niggas. I was just like, boy, that, 
scraping the bottom of the barrel, ain't you, Puffy? I, you know, I guess, you know, people ain't really trying to hang with Puffy like that, like that. So this nigga is hanging on the on the damn stoop. Got just a regular old sweatshirt, a sweatsuit on, and, you know, not his regular Diddy type of way. So, yeah, Puffy's got problems, and um, we'll see what comes out of this. But a hundred million dollar oh, that cannot feel good knowing that you know you could potentially owe that to somebody who you feel is full of shit. Anyway, when we know more about this story, you guys, I will let you know more. Now, the other lawsuit that I wanted to tell you guys about is the lawsuit that Don Richard has brought against Puffy. All right, Don Richard was Don Richard, I guess. It, was it always Richard? Because it's Richard now. Was it always Richard and we were just pronouncing her last name incorrectly or did she change it in her artist, you know, in her artist way? But anyway, Dawn has now brought upon a lawsuit and she is saying that she s survived years and years of sexual abuse, physical abuse, and emotional abuse at the hands of Puffy. So we know the history of Don Richard with Puffy. We know that she met him on Making uh, Making the Band. I think it was season three. She was on season three and season four when they were trying to to get together the group, um, the girl all girl group. Okay, which ultimately turned out to be Danity Kane. But we watched that show and we saw how Puffy was with those girls. And um, I'm going to just tell you guys right off of the top before we even get delve deep into this that I 100% believe it because we saw whispers of it on the damn show. But let me just back up. So she was on the show. You know, they had to go through everything that they had to go through in order to win the spot, the final five uh, places in Danity Kane. Um, and Don Richard was one of them. She said that, you know, he baited them with, promises of fame, promises of pushing their career on. I mean, a lot of it is very similar to what Cassie was saying was happening in her life as well. However, Puffy was more intimidating physically towards Don with the, with the threat of possibly um, doing more to her. It, it was very much uh, emotional abuse. Now, he was physically abusive as well, but for the most part, he was playing on her feelings, on her um, being afraid of him, her not knowing, you know, he he kept her off balance and all. You guys, I, I'm not going to go over the paperwork like word for word, but I'm going to tell you, he was a goddamn mess. That puffy is a devil, like a full-blown devil. The fact that he had all these women in his clutches and he was terrifying so many at the same time and getting away with it. I mean, it's just, you can't even feel sorry for him. You can't even feel any little inkling of anything because the things that he did with this Harvey Pierre guy, that Harvey Pierre guy is just a step down and just a small step down from Puffy because he obviously got a lot of the, he got a lot of the benefits of the shit that Puffy was doing um, with these women, underage women. I mean, just a mess, you guys. The, the the paperwork, I read it this morning and it was crazy. You know, she did corroborate a lot of the stuff that Cassie said. She said that she met, she was with Puffy when he actually met Cassie and how he was just immediately fixated and obsessed with her, ended up breaking her you know getting in between her relationship with ryan leslie and pretty much stole stole her from him and um took her in and then was just abusive to the girl to the point where even don would try to tell cassie like you know you should not be there like let's try to get you out and when he would find out that don would try to tell cassie you know to leave he'd be like leave my bitch alone bitch you don't have nothing to do with my life and you know what i do you fucking worry about you and your career you know do you want a career you know you better watch what you're doing like all that kind of threatening scary ass shit he would work them to death again we saw that on making the band i mean i immediately i thought about when keisha cole was making um last night 
A some, some, some affection. Remember how many times he made her sing that chorus over and over and over again. And she was just like, I don't know what else you want me to do. Like, I have sung this so many damn times. And he was just like, you got to do it. That's not it. That's not it. And remember how excited and crazy and yelling and screaming he was? We already saw that kind of shit on the show. If you guys haven't seen it, go back and watch. I'm sure it's on YouTube somewhere. Go back and watch the scene of when he was doing that to Keisha Cole. So I can 100% believe when Don says that he would work them, make them rehearse for days, 72 hours, no break, always in the studio and wouldn't feed them, you know, but he would talk about her face and say that she was too skinny and, you know, she needed to do something. But it was just like, nigga, you're not even feeding me. you working me to fucking death, okay? And then you scaring her. She's seeing all of the shit that he's doing to Kim Porter. She said that she's seen him, you know, Kim Porter face all battered and, battered and bruised. Saw Cassie get the hill. I mean, saw Cassie herself physically seeing the girl getting beat up. There was one time when she was, Cassie was supposedly making some eggs for um, Puffy. And he came down there screaming and yelling, saying, how you don't do shit right. And, you know, you know, I hate you. You make me sick and move and threw the fucking hot damn eggs on the girl, scalding hot eggs on the girl. This was after Don was no longer with Danity Kane, and now they were trying to form the group um, Last Train to Paris, which was just hearing these stories about Last Train to Paris is just so unfortunate because that is really, truly one of my favorite albums. That is such a good album, okay? And it is a fucking shame that these girls had to go through what they were going through just to do this, all right? She and the girl, what was the girl's name? Carlina Car Carmina, the one that was also on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. You know, they were there. They were going through it with, um, with Puffy. He was, again, working them to death. They were trying to help Cassie to get out of it. But, the, you know, Cassie was afraid, which made them afraid. They wasn't sure if Puffy was crazy enough to do something to them. Um, and, and then the, 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 the girl, the other girl, Carlina, whatever her name is, you know, her and her husband were having problems and he was really close to Puffy and the husband beat the, the, the girl up and, you know, they were trying to get her out of it. And I mean, when I tell you just chaos and just craziness, like, I don't even know how you can be this way to a human being that. I, I just don't know how you be this evil to somebody or to some bodies because it wasn't just one person. It was a lot of people that Puffy had in his clutches and he was just crazy, okay? Even, she even described a, a time when um, she was really exhausted and, I, well, let me let me remember the story. She was really exhausted and she was trying to go stay in a hotel. Now, I might be getting some stories mixed up, but there was one story where she said that her his security or his bodyguard ended up putting her in the car, her and the Carlina girl in the car. I think this was one time when they were trying to get Cassie out. Um, they put her in the car, them two in the car that didn't have any handles on the inside of the car. So there was no way for them to get out of the car. They were locked in the car. Okay. It was pitch black. There was no light in the car, you know, and they were just in there. Well, eventually somebody came and got Carlina out, but they left on in there. She said she was in that car for two hours in the dark, that it was freezing cold, that there was no, um, um, no heat or anything in there and she's just sitting in this car which was losing her mind She was ready to get the fuck out the car wasn't sure if he was gonna kill her or what because he would always like threaten her and say You know, I make people disappear and all that and she said that he would have police at his parties and shit So that was just to let people know that he got even the police in his back pocket and shit And it was just sort of like nigga, you ain't really got nowhere to go Okay, all this shit the same shit that we heard that Cassie was saying now we got Don saying it okay? Okay, and um, she said she ended up calling her father and her father went to try to find, um, went to get Puffy to get, you know, get her out the car or whatever. And Puffy threatened the father, like threatened the father, like, you know, you need to, you know, you need to be concerned about your daughter. Okay, you need to watch what you say and um, think about your daughter, her life, her career, you know, I guess he wouldn't flat out say like, I'll kill that bitch if I have to, but. You know, when you saying shit like that and it's obvious that you have all of this power and all this money to do it, 
you know, now the father is scared that his daughter is going to get hurt, that the family might get hurt, you know, so Don was worried about her family as well. You guys go read them damn court paperwork and just, it's amazing to me that this man was as awful of a person that he is. Like, I can't even, there is no redeeming qualities. And it's so much more crazy the fact that he's done this whole rebranding of himself you know he's no longer puffy he's not even really no longer diddy even though he's kind of diddy but he wanted everybody to know him as brother love you know he left the new york um coast and he went to la and it was all you know brother love and and all this and he god and i love god and all and it's all a fucking act it has to be an act you cannot say that you love god and do those things. And even though he may have slowed up on some of the shit, you know, I, I am I'm pretty sure that he still does these things to the people that, you know, he, he knows that he can get away with. That's the reason why he has so many lawsuits right now. Okay, that Daphne Joy girl and um you know, you wonder the stories about the one that he just had the baby with. Like I just child, it is crazy. Craziness. Okay. Now, of course, a lot of people are saying, like, why did Don wait to say anything? You know, Don has been um, working with Puffy for a long time. And, you know, she was in Danity Kane and supposedly he crossed her. And then she was in uh, Last Pain of Tra Last Train to Paris and supposedly cr he crossed her. And then now she even was on his last album and he crossed her the again, hasn't paid her. I mean, this man owes her millions with an S on the end of dollars which is not surprising. We've heard that. So people are saying like, why does she keep going back? Why does she keep giving him a chance knowing exactly how he, how it is? And I don't have an answer to that. You know, th there's things about people that have been in abusive situations, emotionally, physically, you know, um, sexually or whatever, that some of the moves I, I don't know if I'll ever understand, you know, I guess it would take a person that was in that situation to try to explain those things to you. But there's definitely a battered woman syndrome where your thinking process don't even always be right. OK, um, so, you know, but I think that these women have been so fucking scarred by him. It's a it's a it's amazing to me that they're able to go on with their life knowing that this nigga is still lurking around in the shadows somewhere, you know? And it's just sort of like he did all this stuff to these people and he ain't worried about it, obviously, because he's still going on about his life. Like nobody was going to come out and say something. She said that she got the strength to come out and say something against him, of course, when Cassie did that, you know? And it was just sort of like, well, she did it, then I can do it too. And um, hats off to her for that. But I'm just like, I just cannot believe the stories some of the stories that you hear, you know, you just be like, mm. but when I hear it from Cassie, when I hear it from Don, I believe it. I believe it. And it is just, I just don't know what kind of person you can be to do those things to somebody and don't feel no kind of remorse for it. Like you don't feel nothing. You just go on with your life. And now you in these people face on TV talking about you brother love and all this and, and you know you done left a whole bunch of fucking motherfuckers in your wake. I'm talking about men and women. It's amazing. But you guys, that puffy is, ooh wee. He's crazy. Crazy. Wow. And to think that I always wanted to go to one of his parties, you guys, I just, I'm just like, I am floored when I read those. But yeah, you guys going to read the paperwork Y'all going to let me know what you think about all this, whether or not you believe Don. I mean, I, I think at this point, everybody fucking ain't lying, okay? And we've had more proof, you know, with the video of Cassie getting beat up in the hotel and everything. Like, all of this stuff is so feasible, so feasible, and so easily seen. So, yeah, my heart goes out to Don because I feel like she probably still has a lot of therapy and shit that needs to happen behind shit like this and this only went on i say making the band 2000 early 2000s well, it went on for a good 10 years you know that she was wrapped up with puffy and shit but again like i said she kind of got started again with him on this last album but oh child craziness y'all let me know what you think about all of that y'all puffy is 
I don't know how he looks at himself in the mirror every day. Child, I don't know how he does it. All right, you guys, that's it for this video. I'm going to get on off of here. Okay, we do this every single week, so make sure you thumbs up the video, comment, and subscribe, and make sure you come back. Until next time, rock stars.